What a treat, everybody. Please say hello to Mark Kelly. Oh, what a treat. Now, this is very unusual for me. How come? Because I've spent years as the guy who asks the questions. Right. And typically, I'm not the guy getting interviewed. Right. So the tables are being turned here. The amount of things that you have had to explore, even in this story here, the most recent one, if you can handle that, you can handle anything. So before you tell us more about the story, take a look at this clip here. Walk the line. Look at this. As police close in, the biker kills himself rather than return to prison. But he leaves a bombshell, recorded evidence suggesting this star cop was on the Hells Angels payroll for years. So once the word comes out that it's not just a criminal investigation into gangs, but now the cops might be connected, that's a whole different thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's incredible. And this story, I mean, this is something that you, you could see this whole plot line showing up in, a, in one of these uh, cop shows in the States because it is so incredible. It, you know, growing up in Montreal and I, where I started my career, uh, I was a national reporter in Montreal. And we were covering the biker war. And for younger people in the audience wouldn't remember it in the 90s. But here was a biker war in Montreal that left more than 160 people dead. Right. It, you know, we were constantly covering, you know, there, there were bombings, there were shootings. Uh, and the there, way that people hear stories now disconnected, oh, a car bomb went off over here in Pakistan, this stuff was happening in Canada. In Canada. Yeah. This is happening in Montreal. And this is happening week after week after week. The corpses are piling up. It was this incredible story. And out of all of this comes this super cop. This guy named Benoit Roberge, who starts recruiting police informants to give him information that actually gave police the upper hand. So they went in, they made this massive bust, they got the top Hells Angels in Quebec, thanks to this guy's uh, uh, legwork. Then he shows up again in the year 2000, makes, he makes another big sweep where there's huge arrests. Virtually every Hells Angels member in Quebec is arrested. Thanks to this guy, Benoit Roberge. So imagine when we find out that just a few months ago, this cop, Benoit Roberge, is arrested in a police sting, an incredible police sting, and charged with selling secrets to the Hells Angels. Right. But what it really looks at, George, is this whole idea that we, our story's called Walk the Line, and it's just looking at that line between cop and criminal. You have that line where you have to, for your, your line, where you look at the humanity in it and say, I just don't think I'm going to tell that story today. It's not, it's not the time. There's some stories you inject yourself into, uh, that we choose in the fifth estate. Other times in my career where I've been hosting in live events where you're just thrown into a situation. And then it's a real test about what am I ready to do? And there are days where you think, I don't want to have to see this. Right. I don't want to have to deal with it. But you don't have a choice. And you learn so much about yourself and what you're able to deal with. Um, but it leaves a mark on you. Yeah, I mean, there's no two ways about it. It leaves a mark on you. One of the most memorable moments for all tragic reasons for most people in this world is this day when you were on air. Take a look at this. We've got some breaking news to tell you about something we're, we're just learning about ourselves here. Uh, apparently, a small passenger plane has crashed into one of the World Trade Towers. This, of course, in Manhattan, New York City. So somebody hands you a piece of paper or goes into your ear yeah, you that, watch it. I mean, that day, September 11th, started with uh, my director, Linda Rollick, coming into my ears. She said, I was hosting the morning show then at CBC and said, uh, there's a fire in the World Trade Tower. What do we do with it? I said, well, let's go live. We had no idea at that point. No idea whatsoever. We heard there's a fire. I said, there's a fire in one of the world's tallest towers. Were you thinking but, something? No. No? This is, you know, pre-2001. And, I mean, I was a pretty young, younger guy then. And, uh, and I grew up that day yeah. uh, in ways that were uh, unforgettable. And, and the well, toughest how, how part... How do you mean? Like, what do you mean? Well, I, yeah, I, mean, I just remember that, you know, one of the toughest parts of that day, we had a huge vid wall, you know, something like this. But I remember looking at that vid wall at one point, and it was a close-up on one of the towers. And, uh, ugh, it's heartbreaking. It was, uh, I could see, I thought were pixels on the screen. Uh, but then I realized it was people jumping from the towers. And you just see them dropped through the screen, one after the other after the other. And, and I just, I had to look away 
And you're reminded of what no journalist can ever forget, which is the humanity of the story. It wasn't just a story. It was a story about people. Right. And that was the, just the reminder. Like, you can never forget that the best stories are always about people. But a struggle for many journalists, and I'm sure you felt it before, is how much of you can be there when you're telling it. Yeah, and it's, it, it, uh, you know, when you're in, in that moment, it's our job to sort of compartmentalize things, right? So it goes in and it's locked. And then you face the fire. And there's no break, there's no, okay, we're going to take a commercial break on these terrorist attacks so I can get my right. together. There's none of that. So you're in that. Stuff's changing me, fed into your ear. Fed you're into reading. your ear. You're there with a the laptop. We're going to different correspondence. And we're just trying to figure out what is going on in the world right now. And more importantly, what is going to happen next? We'll stick around more with Mark Kelly right after this. <laughs> When we come back, Mark's take on this story. Do you smoke crack cocaine? Yes, I have some crack cocaine. Well, the fire's been calm, but I mean, we really, we really can't oh forget God. the fact that there's been no rain that's my, for uh, that's days my first now, 40-odd 40, 40 yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. So what happens now is the forest, uh, the situation is still very volatile. The forest, drawer, dr the forest floor, pardon me, floor. is as dry as the California desert, I'm told. Listen, we're back here with Mark Kelly. Never mind the fact that he's, he's got his head in his hand and correcting his own words. That was your first, man. That was my, that was my first ever, I've, you know, I've never seen that. Truth be told, yeah. I have never, ever, ever in my life seen that. Do you think about... I was thinking about it in an, in an, it's an innocuous story. The Brian Burke story, he was talking about Bobby Ryan. A journalist reported the actual words of a hockey guy, and people freaked out. Oh, my God, why was the journalist even there? And I, I was amazed at how quickly people blame the journalist in that story, and often do. Do you think that the people actually have a stomach for what it is you have to do? Um, you know, it's interesting. I'll, I'll throw another story at you, which one would be familiar to certainly this audience, would be the Rob Ford story. Yeah. When the Toronto Star first reported that there was a video out there of Rob Ford sm smoking crack, yeah. Rob Ford's reaction was, you know, the media, them in particular, you are liars and maggots. And there are a lot of people who said, I'm with him. Yeah. I believe this guy. And when the police confirmed the existence of that video, and Rob Ford obviously then eventually came forward and admitted, yeah, yes, I, have smoke crack. I did smoke crack. Yeah. Um, you know, I thought it was a great line that came from the Toronto Star. They said, this wasn't just a victory for them and their story. This was a victory for journalism. What a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Mark Kelly, everybody. The Fifth Estate, Mark's story on Benoit Robert's Friday night, 9 o'clock on CBC. We'll be right back.